Hello everyone, it's Maria and welcome to my channel. I am going to be ranked based on scientific accuracy all of the ocean related movies I have seen recently. A couple of notes, I'm only going to be analyzing the marine science part of the movie. Anything related to physics, chemistry or any scientific field I will not be judging because I don't know much about them. I am not rating these movies based on entertainment, I am basing them based on scientific accuracy. We have uh, the ultimate truth. So this movie is ultimately correct in everything. There's nothing wrong in how this movie portrays whatever is portraying. We have, yeah, it's all right. You know, like could be better. There's some stupid things here and there, but overall, like, yeah, this could happen. That's, that's fine. There's whatever. It's like, <laughs> That's a really weird thing, actually. Whatever. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. Now it's whatever. Uh, whatever could be, um, like, it's pretty bad, but, you know, whatever. It's 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 excusable because uh, there are some things that are good, some things that are bad, but whatever. You know, like, eh. Mostly nonsense. I think it speaks for itself. And uh, what the fuck? It's like, why was this? Why? What is happening right now? This is total craziness. This is crazy talk, all right? That's what this is. It's crazy talk. And before people come into my comments saying it's just a movie or these are just movies, the sole purpose of the movies is to entertain, I know. Yet, I still want to talk about the science within them because I like it and it's cool to do. So, <laughs> Here we go. Before we dive right into it, wanted to let you know I am now affiliated to Epidemic Sound and Skillshare. So if you want one month free trial for any of those, check down below. All right, let's jump right into this. Okay, so here are the movies I got and they are in no particular order here. This is a mix of movies. Like there's all sorts of sci-fi, B-rated movies, old movies, new movies, that it's like a mix. Obviously, spoiler alert, I'm not going to be watching out for spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled for any of these movies, skip ahead when I'm talking about said movie. So the first one, The Shallows. All right, so here, um, I thought the shark was pretty accurate. It looked pretty good. Sometimes they just, the animatronic sharks or the CGI sharks are just really badly made and you just, you know, it, it just doesn't look real. And this shark looked real, so that's a plus for that. Furthermore, um, I think there are a couple of things that they got right. For example, in the beginning of the movie, the shark is in the waters where Blake Lively is because there's a whale carcass. And it is true that when there is a whale carcass, all sorts of predators are attracted to it. Sharks, bigger fish, carnivores, any type of carnivore in the water, since while a whale is gigantic, it's a lot of food for a lot of fish. However, of course, they overdid it in terms of how aggressive the shark would be. Usually the issue from a scientific uh, standpoint with these movies is that they have to make the shark like ultra relentless. It would be a boring movie if she would just go onto the rock and the shark would just continue its life and leave her there. But that's probably what would happen in reality. It's really unlikely that a shark would just stick around waiting for this potential human that is not even something they usually eat to leave the rock while there is, first of all, a huge whale carcass just next to her or other fish in the sea. <sighs> like all of these movies are mostly nonsense, really. I I'm gonna, gonna put it in whatever. Finding Nemo, ultimate truth. Like everything in Finding Nemo is real, undisputed. The end. That's it. Okay, continue. Now we have The Heart of the Sea. Um, so this this movie was is based on Moby Dick, on the, on the book Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I think that's the guy's name. And this book was based on an albino sperm whale that really existed called Mocha Dick. It, back in the days, I, actually, I, I'm going to have to check this. Uh, Dick, when did it exist? Like, I think in the late 1800. Oh, no. Actually, mid 1800s. Mocha Dick was an albi albino whale that was very difficult to catch. Back in the day, sperm whales were hunted heavily, mostly for oil that you could remove from their blubber because they are massive animals. And back in the 1800s was a very common practice. And there was this one sperm whale that all the sailors would talk about called Mocha Dick 
that was very difficult to catch and in some occasions it is told that it even sunk some ships. The story of Moby Dick is based on that whale. So Moby Dick is based on Mocha Dick. And the movie is based on the book. So there is somehow sort of like a truth behind the, you know, what happened uh, it, with Mocha Dick. Obviously this is all based on stories told by fishermen and sailors. In the movie you follow a sailor who is on a ship and is trying to, who's a whaler, trying to catch sperm whales and then they encounter Moby Dick, a massive albino sperm whale and that's trying to sink the ship. So there is some, you know, I cannot, I mean, there is some truth to this story and there are scenes that could potentially happen. So if a sperm whale rams a ship, it could potentially sink it. Uh, however, there is a more spiritual sort of, you know, part of the story that I, that it's more difficult to believe that would work. I'm going to put it in. Yeah, it's all right. Like it can't, it's not as uh, accurate as Nemo. By the way, if you want to watch a, a review of Finding Nemo, I already have two videos on the channel reviewing Finding Nemo, so you can check that one out. The Meg. Oh my god, this is the most watched video on my channel. It's the re me reacting and reviewing The Meg. That was a riot. <laughs> this was an entertaining movie. I enjoyed watching The Meg. It was one of like those uh, action sort of, you know, fun movies to watch. But in terms of scientific accuracy, um, I'm going to have to put it in mostly nonsense because they just got a ton of things wrong from the point, from the oceanography point of view. I don't even know where to start. I need water. If you want to know my opinion or my scientific review of this movie, you can check out my review. But they do get uh, some some concepts right and some things right. For example, that in the deep you would have really biodiverse environments around hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are sort of in a biodiversity oasis in the deep ocean. But they go to the Mariana Trench, I believe to the Challenger Deep if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember, but it's one of the deepest points of the Mariana Trench. And uh, they see life all the way, like fishes, deep sea fishes, all the way from the top, from the surface down to, I don't know, 10 kilometers, 9 kilometers deep. And that's not really accurate. Usually fish, like the deepest fish ever found was around 8 kilometers deep, so 8,000 meters deep. They don't go usually below 4,000 or 5,000 kilometers deep. This is already really deep, by the way. Editing Maria here. Obviously, I meant 4,000 to 5,000 meters, not kilometers. I'm going to take this opportunity to further clarify that all that I've just said regarding the amount of life that you could expect throughout the water column until the deep is based on our current knowledge of deep sea biodiversity. We've never seen so much biodiversity below like 4,000, 5,000 meters as we see in some of the initial scenes in the Meg where there's like this very, very biodiverse ecosystem deep in the Mariana Trench. There's no evidence that there are that many fish down there. But it doesn't mean that further on in the future we won't find that there are actually more fish down in the deep than we think there are. But given what we know today, that's not the case. So back to original Maria. If you want to watch a more in-depth review of this movie, you can check out my my review. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about the existence of a Meg. This is the sci-fi part of the movie that I'm not going to even judge in this case. But everything else, like the way how the shark leaves the layer where it where it has where it has been hidden for. I don't know how long through this this corridor of warm water, um, just the, the shark. I don't know. The, it's it. It's just mostly nonsense. So this stays here mostly nonsense. I'm gonna make a lot of people angry because a lot of people want this movie to be true for some reason. <laughs> oh, Deep Blue Sea. Oh, this was my last movie review. Uh, right. Deep Blue Sea is an interesting one. But we have smart sharks in Deep Blue Sea. We have sharks that have been injected. I think it's Mako sharks 
that have been injected with some serum that makes them smart. The scientists are trying to find a protein that will uh, fight Alzheimer's and they use sharks as guinea pigs and as a side effect from, you know, injecting them with this serum, they become smart and try to flood the facility where the scientists are <laughs> in order to swim into the deep blue sea. This, this premise is fantastic. Ultimate truth. I'm gonna say this is mostly nonsense. Like, they, uh, the fa they have sharks swimming backwards, which it has nothing to do with how smart they are they are unable to swim backwards because of their physical attributes it doesn't matter if they become smarter they will still not be able to swim backwards the way scientists talk about sharks is really also really unsettling it's not how shark sh shark scientists talk about sharks they wouldn't say they're like monsters and killing machines and but i know it, it makes it more dramatic they have sharks getting smarter and just yeah, I don't know. I, I cannot. I'm unable to put it in whatever. I watched this movie actually several times already. It was always on Portuguese TV. I watched it many times and I really, really enjoyed watching it. And I still kind of chuckle every time I, it's on TV and I still watch a bit. It doesn't go below. It doesn't go these because they still get a couple of things right. So, for example, the sharks don't look too bad. And the Mako shark doesn't look too bad. Um, they say something like even in the part where the shark is swimming backwards they do say sharks don't swim backwards a couple of things like that mostly nonsense oh the classic jaws um jaws 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 the one and only first movie that <laughs> traumatized people and made people afraid of sharks um there were a couple of scenes of course it's ultra exaggerated again sharks are not eating machines even though back in the days there was a theory that some sharks would become eating machines they would just go nuts and and you know start eating humans and develop this uh, thirst and wanting of human flesh which has kind of been disproved there's no evidence evidence backing that up uh, but back in the days, it was an hypothesis that uh, had been brought up by some scientists some decades before that even. So that part is not really true. A shark would not like, you know, just stick around a beach only to eat humans. So that's something that is not correct or, or that is not evidence-based and something that doesn't really happen but uh there's a couple of things like they are more active and sun during sunsets which is true at dawn don't swim at dawn that's when sharks are the most active especially if you are in a place where you know that sharks hunt don't swim uh, after sunset or during sunset the shark doesn't look all too bad they show also a, a dead shark what was it was it tiger shark i think looked really real i'm Problem. Maybe it was even real. It looked really real. It looked real, <laughs> really real. Not only real, just really <laughs> real. Real. Well, I don't know. Um, uh, it's mm, like I, I'm. I'm afraid that I'm also afraid of putting it in mostly nonsense because it's such a classic and I've watched it so many times and. I don't know really. Um, they also they get some things right, but. I don't, I'm gonna put it in whatever because I don't know maybe I'm biased just because it's a classic and I enjoy it but they do get some things right from my from my remember from what I can remember I might make a reaction to Jaws at some point Finding Nemo again why do I have two Finding Nemo's oh because the, of course it goes again <laughs> ultimate truth I don't know why I have two Finding Nemo's. That's uh, rather curious. All right. Jaws 2. Oh, this. Okay, so Jaws had some things right. Jaws 2 just blew all the things right off the window. Because the premise of Jaws 2 is that there's a shark that wants revenge for Jaws, the first one. So Jaws dies at the end of the first of Jaws. And Jaws 2 is like a cousin or a sibling. I don't remember if it's related, <laughs> but it's basically a shark that is out for revenge because humans killed the first shark. 
There's a bunch of jumping on boats. I mean, sharks can jump on boats. It can occasionally happen, but it's not with this relentless uh, attitude of revenge and like of destroying a boat and chomp, 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 chomping through it and to eat the humans. This also happens in Jaws, so there is a truth to it, to it, but it's not something that often happens. And it's something that would probably hurt the shark. So it would, I don't know, man. It's either like, and sharks don't, don't seek revenge. At least not that we know of. There's absolutely no evidence to suggest that sharks can not even feel those kind of emotions of grief and revenge to that extent. So I'm, no, I think, I mean, the, the this one the WTF the, there's only one movie that can go here and it's because it's <laughs> so I'm gonna put this one at mostly nonsense because Sharknado I mean <laughs> I I don't even know what to say <laughs> this is just it's just the best movie to watch when you ha once you have a couple of drinks and are with some friends and it, it's just it's a hilarious movie but scientifically oops scientifically it's yeah, you can forget it. Um, where should I start? Tornadoes with sharks. There are occasions in which tornadoes can actually remove animals from the water. But I would doubt that those sharks, after they've been in their tornado, would be in a good state, or at least in a state that they would just jump out of the tornado to eat people. I'm pretty sure that's something that does not happen. I mean, everything... I. I a lot of people wanted me to uh, review Sharknado, but the reality is I don't even know where to start. Uh, what would I say, you know? Like, uh, it is definitely an entertaining movie, but in scientifically, I'm afraid it's gonna go to what the F tier. The Abyss. The Abyss is interesting because it's a sci-fi movie. The premise of this movie is that there's this underwater, there's this team of people that work in an oil rig. It's the first or one of like a, a submersed oil rig. The people live in this sort of underwater base close to the bottom where they are uh, drilling for the oil. And this team is requested by the government and the US military to go check out what happened to a submarine that was sunken by an alien object, by a, a unknown object. And I, they, they go because they think they are going to look for survivors and then sci-fi things happen. In the abyss, we have something which is really cool, which is uh, an underwater helmets through which you can communicate. And uh, those helmets actually exist. Uh, it, some people use it to make documentaries, for example, to talk to each other about what they're seeing while they're underwater. So these are the things that actually do exist. There's also uh, this famous scene in the abyss where a rat and later on a person has to breathe a liquid. The idea is that by breathing liquid you don't suffer the consequences of being under pressure because instead of having gas in your lungs you have liquid. There is some truth behind the existence of such a liquid. There is some research done on rats I believe and they were able in fact to have rats breathe liquid but I don't think it has been done on humans. If that is not true, I'll leave it somewhere here. So there's a lot of like little things that are based on truth, things that really exist. They used real ROVs, you, they used real uh, submarines. Um, but uh, there's also some things that do not really exist. They just are based in reality, but are not reality. Uh, they dive super deep, uh, like the deepest dive. I, I don't remember. They dive with the, uh, even before, even without this uh, liquid. I don't remember. They're like below like 400 meters. And I think the deepest dive ever was at 300 something meters very recently. So I'm going to put it in. Yeah, it's all right. Uh... It's yes or right or whatever. I'm not sure. I mean, it's yeah, it's all right. Like uh, it, it's some. There's some basics, basics of truth. Um, there's uh, they use uh, 
equipment that really exists the the base itself doesn't exist but that's also the idea it's the first sub the oil rig that is able of being underwater I, and um, so i'm gonna put him yeah it's all right yeah maybe before I, I i'm not these are in no specific order by the way like yeah we'll see if i need to readjust something in the end finding dory <laughs> goes up here as well uh, yeah it also goes up here i also have two videos reviewing finding dory if you want to check those out so yeah here we have the final tier list a final list let's check if there's something i would like to readjust ultimate truth ultimate truth absolutely yeah it's all right yeah why did i decide to do this is really hard because they are they are these are completely different types of movies <laughs> really difficult some movies were definitely trying to be realistic or more realistic others were definitely trying to be as most nonsensical as possible or at least owning to their nonsense like like the Meg I'm pretty sure that people making it were just having a tons of fun and, and thinking all right how can we make this as dumb as possible or not as dumb but they were probably really self-aware of how inaccurate it was Sharknado and obviously and Deep Blue but then there are movies that take themselves a bit more seriously, like The Heart of the Sea. It's a nice movie. And yeah, I know if, yeah, these are tight, kind of, but it's really difficult. These are completely different movies. The one is sci-fi and the other one is a historical tale based in a, re in a book that's based on reality. Yeah, let's keep it there. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with whatever for Jaws and Shallows. Uh, of course, they both suffer from the same problem, which is this idea that sharks would just stick around to eat humans when they have an ocean full of fish around them. This uh, overly aggressive, revengeful shark out to get you, something that doesn't exist. But if we take away that part, definitely Shallows is, is a bit more realistic than Jaws. Jaws is much more over the top. Mm. Should Jaws go down here? But on the other hand, I cannot put Jaws together with the Meg, Deep Blue Sea, and Jaws. Jaws 2, no, no. It goes up It goes up here. Meg, Deep Blue Sea, Jaws 2. Jaws 2... Meg is definitely the most nonsensical. I think there's a bunch of things that's just... <laughs> yeah. It does have some conservation uh, sprinkled into it. Like, they talk about finning, shark finning, and all that, which is... Which I appreciate. I think the most nonsensical might even be the deep blue sea. I mean, that's the, nah, it's really hard. Let's just keep it a tie, all right? Let's keep it like this. And Sharknado, yeah, definitely. And uh, what the F, that's definitely, definitely where it should go. All right, uh, I think I'm sure I made a bunch of people mad with this video. Let me know what you, if you agree with my rating um, or what, if there's something you want to add to this? I'm pretty happy with my rating. Because there's so many things in each of these movies that you could comment on. And I'm just, you know, uh, talking about things I remember from the top of my head, even though I did watch them recently. And some of these movies I have reviews in my channel, so you can check out more about them in uh, down below in the description. So I just wanted to make a fun video uh, before the end of the year. Wish you all a great year, hopefully m better than the last one. Hope you are all doing fine. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you want to watch more marine related content. Patreons, all links, social medias all down below. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.